Uh, we're just going to wait and see the wicket tomorrow and um, probably have a bit more of a discussion about it tonight, but we're not going to announce it now. Yeah, there's there's a few options. We've got obviously myself and Darcy, uh, Usman, Stoin, who's done it really well through the Big Bash. Alex Carey did it really well in uh, the UAE for that last game that he played there at the, at the top of the order. So yeah, there's plenty to think about and, and a few options that we can go with and a few combinations. So that's something that we'll think about a little bit more uh, over the next few hours. What's it mean with so many players that play the BBL and the chunk of it coming into a T20 series? I think it's a good opportunity for guys to continue on that good form. Everyone who's here has, has played a significant role in their in their BBL franchises or or in the Test series um, just completed as well. So I think that it's a good opportunity to play some T20 cricket, especially here against India, who are, are quality in their own conditions. While well, everywhere, to be fair, um, but after having a really good stint of T20, it's not often that we get a chance to to prepare and, and have a a tournament lead into to international games. Yeah. Uh, we're talking through his surfing injury, um, how close he was to to breaking his neck, and a uh, little bit of cricket stuff, but but not a huge amount. It's uh, just great to have legends of the game around again, and he was out there just doing some catching work, some slip practice with Ash Turner. Um, he was a great slipper in his own right, so anything that the guys can learn. I know Alex Carey was chatting to him to him about batting and specifically top of the order stuff, so I'm not exactly sure what what their, their dialogue's been, but it's just great having legends around again. And last one from me, yeah, you've been in India so many times. What about India? Um, makes it such a great place to live. Oh, I think just the, the passion of the, the cricket fans. Everyone, everywhere you go, you get treated really well, and, and the I suppose the the love that they have for cricket is something that we all have in common and it's a great place to tour, it's a great place to play, it can be incredibly tough place to play at times, um, but that's why you love it, you, you play against the best opposition in their own conditions which is always tough, but the people here make it make it very special. And uh, what are you to get most out of the series in terms of your World Cup preparations? Yeah obviously with the two T20s it's a chance for guys to continue on their big bash form. Um, and, and test themselves against the best in the world um, in their own conditions. But in terms of the one-day stuff, I think it's a, a great opportunity for us to keep improving. I think in the in the series at home against India, we we improved a lot from from the series before, and and, and there was some great progression made in, in where we want to be going over the next few months in particular. So it's a it's a great opportunity for for us to keep, I suppose, nailing down that that pattern that we want to play and and the style that we want to play leading into the World Cup. We've still got um, ten internationals plus five, five other practice warm-up games before that first World Cup game. So there's there's still a fair bit of cricket to go, and, and as long as we keep tracking in the right direction um, and and give India a really good fight and, and win this series, uh, it'll be it'll be what it's all about. Aaron, you come here from uh, the Big Bash, like you said. Uh, this time the Big Bash was bigger, perhaps not necessarily bigger. What is your take on the fact that you? Attendance has kind of dwindled in places. Do you think it's it's the right size, or do you think you need to go back to lesser games? No, I think the the amount of games was right. I think 14 games was was fine. I think maybe it could have just been a week shorter or something. You can maybe play a few more double head matches, and uh, it's always tough when kids are going back to school and families are are going uh, are preparing for that. So midweek games uh, starting at seven or six thirty, six forty. Um, it's going to be tough for families to make it out all the time uh, with kids having school the next day and things like that. So um, I think 14 is still the right number though. What about um, in terms of like getting a mental break between the Big Bash and, and coming in? Like you, you spoke after um, sort of, you know, leaving the test team and getting back into the Big Bash. <coughs> the benefits of just taking a break, are you confident that all the guys sort of had that chance to, to reset? Sort of yeah, I think the, the schedule that the Big Bash allowed towards especially the second half of the tournament when there was a lot of time between games I think that's as good a freshen up as you as you get in the modern game um, especially when you're playing all the time I think the I know at our franchise the Renegades it was quite a relaxed environment in terms of um, in terms of wasn't a huge amount of meetings it wasn't a huge amount of commitments for guys outside of training and and playing so it was it was a chance for them to be able to freshen up and uh, and really 
I suppose just focus on and be really fresh for the games uh, rather than being um, rather than, than having to worry about where to be on certain days and, and extra stuff that, that comes along with with playing cricket at a high level. So I think guys like myself and Pete, uh, Maxi, um, would have still got a, a lot of a freshen up during that period and, and there was a lot of time spent at home during that time as well, which was nice. And how important is this space? Obviously, my thing, just this year, how big it is and how much you want to, to sort of keep the guys as fresh as possible and how do you, like this captain, how do you, do you involve yourself in those conversations? Oh, you put a lot of faith in the in the coaching staff and the medical staff to to monitor that and manage manage their workloads and things like that. But I think the the thing we've got now after this series and after the UAE series is most guys have got April off, which will be a great chance to for them to really freshen up and, and recharge and go again for what is going to be a huge six or seven months for Australian cricket. So I, I know there's going to be guys that'll that'll be here for the first half of the IPL um, and then be home by the start of May. Um, so April will be a really crucial period for guys to be able to, to take that time off and get away from cricket and and um, and really mentally recharge. And um, just getting back to the, the, um, the over combination, is it the same with the one day team? Do you have a bit of a clearer idea who will be opening with you in that series? Yeah, there's, there's still a few options here. Um, Again, in the one-day side, Darcy's here uh, for the first couple as cover for Sean. He's, he's been exceptional when he's opened the batting, been obviously prolific in the middle order as well. Uh, Usman, myself, so, so there's, there's still a few options there. Alex, um, so there's still three, four, five combinations that you could go with in that regard. So it's probably a little bit clearer than what it is with the T20s, um, only because guys have probably done it more recently in, in T20s as well. We should just do a one-on-one. -on -one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's probably outside. It seems to be an expectation that there's a bit of a spot more with the day tomorrow, but he will be opening with you in the World Cup. Is that sort of fair or anything? Is there a genuine chance for someone who really impresses in this next month to, to go open? No, I think, I think definitely um, there's a great opportunity for guys to come and, and really challenge for that spot. And we've seen... Davey obviously have some elbow surgery recently as well as Steve, so um, for that to be that to be in the back of your mind as well, that if things don't go 100% right with their rehab or, or they have some complications with it and they're not back in time, um, it's a huge huge opportunity for guys to step up and and almost cement their place um, going forward for the next the next little while. But uh, there's also things you can juggle around in one day cricket. I've batted in the middle order quite a bit. Um, well, a little bit over the last last little while. Davey's done it the odd time. Um, so whatever we feel is a combination, the right combination at the time, um, I don't think anything's out of the question. Um, you spoke about uh, a style of play. How challenging is it to stick with the style if you don't get consistent results? Uh, are you sort of tempted to pick up the style that you Yeah, that's a, that's a great point. I think at, at times we've, we've been been really committed to a plan and then you, and a style and a, and a way that we want to move forward in the one day game and, and T20 game and, and like you said you, you lose and you, you lose a bit of confidence in that in that style so I think it's really important to to make sure you're matching up what is performance related and what is actually on the right track and if you work back from where you want to be to I think that you can you can plan it out a little bit easier and, and you understand that guys aren't always going to have their best day every day. Um, it still might be the right style to play, but it just didn't come off that day. So to be 100% committed to that is, is really important and, and something that we've got to be mindful of, or we've had to be mindful of when, when things don't go well. You don't just, you don't just dismiss that and, and move on and try a new style straight away or a new strategy or restart again. It, it's about making sure that we're, we're committed to, to what it is and, and you take the ups and downs on the way because we know that if we get it right, that it's, that it's the, as good as anyone else in the world and, and we can beat anyone. So uh, it's about sticking with that and making sure that, that we're 100% committed to it. Last question, Alfred. Yeah. Um, obviously, with Arvin's best confidence mentioned that he seems to be playing a little bit more like the Arvin that we used to see in the Australian game, given the success he had in those times, and also, you can really understand the end of this in one series. And also, uh, what on Matthew and coming and having a with you and the boys today in the practice? 
Sorry, I didn't say, I didn't get the first part of the question. Obviously, the Indian captain did mention that in his press conference that he sees Marcus Cronies as a potential player in the yeah. Australian team. So how, how crucial is it for the Australian team? Does he lend a balance to the Australian team? Yeah, absolutely. He's, he's someone who can bowl 10 overs, bowl, bowl his four overs in T20 cricket. He can be at the top of the order with the bat. We've seen him be really successful in the middle order as well. So to have someone who's as flexible as that is, is a great asset in your team because then you can build a team around them and, and they can almost fill any hole that you need. Um, if, if there's a weakness somewhere, they're generally the best person to fix it and, and you, can, you can shuffle it around them. Um, with the ball, that, that provides so much of a of a chop out for other guys that if, if it's not someone's day then, then they're filling that void and, and and still bowling their overs in their own right. So having an all rounder like Marcus in your side um, is so crucial and, and you've seen with India when Hardik Pandey is fit that it, it, it makes the balance of the team so much better. Ben Stokes for England. Um, it, it's, it's just a huge asset to have a, a really quality all rounder who bats and bowls equally as good and and can fill fill a lot of different roles. Yeah, it was great, obviously, to have have JL's great mate and, and a legend of the game um, come back and someone who's had so much success, success here in India as a batsman to, to get around to this few of the boys and, and have a good chat was, uh, was great.